Hello Nansen Explorers. Today I'm going to show you how you can use Nansen's Wallet Profiler to better understand specific Ethereum addresses. So I've found three different addresses to use as examples. Um, these are somewhat randomly selected. Uh, I found them in some of our dashboards and I wanted to show you first what they look like in Etherscan. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with Etherscan. It's a very useful tool to inspect transactions, addresses, etc. So the first thing to note is if you just look at these in Etherscan, it's not super easy to know what these are. So you see a lot of transactions. Uh, you would have to dig through them to understand specifically what they are and what they do. So let's look at what these addresses look like in Nansen's wallet profiler. So we pick the first one here, um, and then I've already pasted it into this dashboard. So this is what it looks like in the wallet profiler. The first thing that pops up is the label of the address, um, Huobi deposit in this case. And so when we label something as a deposit, that means this is where a specific user sends their funds when they want to send funds to Huobi. So as you know, when you deposit funds to centralized exchange, you get your own specific wallet address to send to um, so that the exchange can know that the funds came from your account uh, and credit the, credit the funds to your account as such. And so in this case, this is a Huobi deposit address. Uh, so the first thing you can see is some behavioral stats. You can see when this uh, address is active uh, on a specific day or on average across all the days it's been active. So that's what you see here. This is in UTC time zone. Uh, you can also see the day of the week. Um, so this can be useful to distinguish, for example, professional uh, traders, um, professional uh, in institutional um, service providers, etc., from like hobby traders, etc. You can also see the token balances that it has up here uh, in the right hand corner. So there are two other sections below that are pretty dense, and that's why I'm making this video to make it a bit easier for you to understand how to use this. The first thing you see is an aggregation of neighboring wallets. So these are labels from the wallets that this address has transacted with. Either it's received funds from them or it's sent funds to them, or there are some contract relationships like creation of contracts or uh, using uh, contracts. So it's by default sorted by the number of transactions made with addresses that contain this label. So um, this is quite good to get an overview of like, you know, what are some relevant labels from the neighboring addresses um, for this particular wallet. And what I like to do is like not just look at the top transactions when we see like Huobi, Binance, okay, there's some kind of affinity with those labels, Chainlink, OKX, et cetera. What I like to do is, for example, sort by ETH incoming. So this is how much Ether uh, has come into this wallet from neighboring wallets that have these labels. So we see there's a lot of funds that have come from, you know, ex exchange as a general label, uh, a lot of funds from Binance, and then, you know, more specific labels like Binance One, OKX, OKX One, et cetera. Uh, it's worth noting that, you know, if you have um, addresses that have multiple labels like OKX Three and OKX, you know, you'll see the amounts twice. And that's just because we aggregate it to the label level. Um, so this is useful. Okay. It's getting funds from Binance, OKX, Huobi, and a bunch of ENS addresses, some old Huobi addresses as well. And then when you sort on outgoing Ether, so where's that Ether being sent to? You can see that, Hey, this is basically being sent to all Huobi wallets. And that's typical of a deposit wallet on an exchange. Funds come in from wherever but they always get channeled to specific main wallets uh, that the exchange owns. So like already now, I feel like, you know, this labels, you know, it's obviously uh, correct. And um, 
you can see a lot of ETH being moved into this uh, wallet and then being passed on to Huobi, the main wallet. Um, you can also look at token transactions. So you do the same thing as for the Ether volume, but you just look at number of transactions and you see there's tokens coming in from Binance, OKX, and then there's tokens going out to Huobi, as you'd expect. So this is kind of similar pattern as with, uh, with Ether. You can also see the number of addresses that have these labels, you know, that have uh, transacted with this wallet. So that's a good kind of like overview um, of the neighboring wallets and which other addresses that this address has interacted with. If you scroll down, you see pretty much the same information, but now on an even more granular level. So this is looking at the same as above, but now on individual wallets. And so these are individual wallets that this address uh, has transacted with. And then we have the label of all of those uh, different you know, contracts and addresses. By default, it's sorted by just the number of transactions, but you can also uh, change the columns that you sort by here. So for example, you can do the same thing as we did above. You can sort based on ether volume coming in. And again, we see the Binance wallets, but now we see the specific, you know, addresses. You can also like scroll over to the right and you can actually click through here to get the address uh, in Etherscan that we're looking at here. So again, this has received a lot of Ether from Binance wallets um, and also from certain ENS labeled addresses like this one here, which uh, cat built ETH, that's an interesting one. Um, you can do the same thing as above with Ether volume, and you see all the, you know, Ether is flowing through to the Huobi main uh, addresses. So, uh, you know, you could dig further and try to understand, you know, uh, who's the owner of this. I mean, the fact that there's a cat.eth sending 10,000 Ether, you know, might be something to look into. Um, gfgroup.eth, um, if you wanted to, you know, dive deeper, you could try, you know, Googling around or trying to understand what's the entity that that owns this uh, specific Huobi deposit address because it belongs to most likely it belongs to a user on Huobi. It could technically be owned by Huobi itself, but it's a good chance that it's uh, controlled by some entity that uses Huobi um, to trade. All right. So that was the Huobi one. Let's look at another example. So this is the one that we had in Etherscan. And so if we look at this one in the wallet profiler, you can see we've labeled this as a casual DEX trader. This is a behavioral label. It means that this wallet has traded uh, less than 10 times on DEXs. Uh, if it traded more than 10 times, it would be medium DEX trader. Uh, or if it traded more than 500 times, it would be a heavy DEX trader. So this can be quite useful to understand, you know, um, that it's not an exchange wallet, for example. It's a, it's a DEX trader. And you can see right away that it has compound DAI and compound USD coin. Uh, so it's a, it's a compound user that you can see that right away. Uh, you can also look at the activity of the day. Uh, not super clear, this one, to be honest. It might be controlled by entities uh, all over the world. Uh, the day of the week is also not super clear in this case. Um, so you could do the same exercise as before, and you can look at, hey, like who's sending tokens to this address? The, you see the compound um, labels coming up here, which you would expect. Um, and going out similar, you see compound. And then looking at Ether volume, uh, you can see compound again. You see a BitGo multisig, which is interesting. You see Uniswap for trades. Um, and then outgoing, you see Edgeware. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I believe Edgeware is a Polkadot related uh, project. So that could be something to look into. Maybe it's something, someone who has uh, staked a lot of Ether or invested a lot of Ether in, in Edgeware uh, somehow. Um, and so you could do the same thing here as well, scrolling down to the individual addresses. You know, Ether volume. Um, you see this Bitcoin, uh, Bitco multisig, which 
you know, click this and you're taken to the Etherscan address profile for that specific address. Um, and again, we see Edgeware when we sort by Ether volume out. So uh, the main destination where it sent a lot of Ether is actually to Edgeware, the lock drop contract. Uh, it says old lock drop contract, so maybe they replaced it with a new one. Um, yeah, so you can also click through this and see, you know, sometimes you find interesting contracts, uh, especially ENS names and so on. If you just look through this, so you can see here, you know, there's a, an FTX deposit address that's been used in six token transactions, and also it's received FTX at uh, token tokens from FTX. So it's a good chance that this address is actually an FTX user. Um, yeah, but you know, you can dig, you can dig further as much as you want, really. Um, last address we're going to look at, um, it's this one again, not super easy to know just from looking at Etherscan what it does. 20,000 transactions. So it's pretty active. Let's look at what it looks like in the wallet profile or in Unson. So in this case, it's interesting. We don't have a label, so it's kind of unknown for us, but you can see here the time of day activity is a bit unusual. Uh, pretty much all of them were made around 6 a.m. UTC. Uh, and they have been done Monday, Wednesday, and Friday primarily. So this is kind of unusual. It may indicate that this is a, an address that has migrated funds, you know, batch wise. Maybe it's used as like a, um, a middleman or a wallet that's in between other wallets to just move funds. Uh, so, we do the same thing as before. We can sort by, you know, Ether coming in and we see there's a lot of Ether coming in from BitThumb and also uh, a lot of Ether coming in from unknown uh, wallets. So, okay, but the BitThumb thing might be interesting. Let's look at outgoing. And yeah, indeed, you see pretty much all of the Ether that's been sent by this wallet goes to BitThumb. So, Good chance this is BitThumb related, especially since it's going to, looks like it's going directly to BitThumb. It doesn't go to a deposit wallet. So, you know, if you scroll down here, yeah, that was, this is already sorted by transactions. Now we're looking at individual addresses again that have interacted with this wallet. Uh, most of them are unlabeled. So, could be that this has been used in some kind of migration or something like that. Uh, we know it's BitThumb related or associated with BitThumb, so maybe it's BitThumb moving funds. And if you sort by Ether volume coming in, you see the, the, the individual address that has sent the most Ether to this one is indeed BitThumb. It's one of their main wallets. And if we look at Ether volume going out, Indeed, you see this is BitThumb, but it's actually another address, right? This was the one where the, the funds came from. 84,000 came from BitThumb, and then 604,000 were sent to this other BitThumb uh, address. And so just to, if you're confused about the difference, you know, 84,000 coming in, 604,000 going out, that's because it also receives Ether from a lot of other wallets. So all these, this is kind of like a funnel. It's receiving ether from a lot of different addresses. And then they're being funneled into one specific address, which is a BitThumb address. So to me, this looks a lot like a migration of funds. Um, and it's very, very likely that this wallet belongs to BitThumb. Um, the reason it's not been tagged as BitThumb is probably because it is a bit unusual. It doesn't, the algorithms that we have has haven't detected it so i'm going to make a note to study this one a bit better later to figure out why it's not been labeled but it looks to me like this is a bit um, um migration wallet somehow might also be a deposit wallet but it's very likely that it's bit thumb related all right so that's it uh just to uh, make it clear how we actually got to the wallet profiler in the first place you can just search for it wallet profiler uh here and if you hit enter you're going to see the wallet profiler dashboard and you simply input the address here uh, there's a shortcut that you can use 
uh, if you've used Nonsen quite a bit. Um, so in your browser, you can just you know open up a new tab and then write Wallet Profiler, and very likely you're gonna have a shortcut to it here. So that's how I quickly use it myself. I tend to just use this shortcut and then paste in the address here. So if I had this address, I might just copy that, go back and like replace it directly in the URL because it says address equals, and then I just replace it and I hit enter and it's gonna load the uh, wallet profiler. Uh, this is the same one as we looked at first, the Huobi deposit. All right, that's it. Hopefully that was useful and make sure to check out Nansen at nansen.ai if you don't have an account already. Um, and find us in our Discord if you have any questions. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.